Bog Panda. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Bog Panda. I'm Too Cool Kelly Tool, and with me, as always... I'm Dr. Mike at official Vegan on everything. You got me all messed up now, sir. Yeah. Well, I figured <laughs> if you could pretend to be a doctor on the show, I could pretend to be cool. So that's what I was going for. But I'm, I'm a real doctor. <laughs> yeah. And I'm really cool. So <laughs> I have a doctor's office. I have a parking lot and a sign. That's all you need. Uh, I don't know. But uh, since <laughs> he's totally falling down on his, his duties please be sure to uh, subscribe to the Bog Panda YouTube channel. Give us some likes, leave us some comments, check our website out, maybe take a peek at the merchandise. Um, that'd be great. Absolutely. And I do apologize for that. You really threw me off with those sunglasses. That, that was, that was <laughs> the, that was the objective. <laughs> so, but uh, I still stand by my, you pretend to be a doctor. I pretend to be cool. <laughs> so that'll be fine. But, um, so we're doing a bog down on the issues as we've changed from squat cobbler when we used to squat on the issues. So I think this is an upgrade, uh, in terms of how we, how we talk about things, but occasionally we will cover some current events and there's been something that's been pretty active for the past couple of weeks regarding a certain Mr. Joe Rogan. And, um, as a peer of ours, <laughs> we thought we would weigh in. <laughs> uh on uh, basically the, on the same level same right cock yeah. him you know you know content creator to content creator right. you know just so i you know he's probably been dying to have us kind of give our our two cents worth so that's what we're we're going to do tonight peer to peer so <laughs> i like it sir there you go <laughs> so um i guess to begin with so a little backstory is mike and i actually recorded a segment on this last week and uh as it was starting to brew up and then things picked up steam and uh while that was going to go out tomorrow we're like nah let's go ahead and kind of do do a new one because of some some new information that just made more sense so so while this is your first opportunity to be bogged down on the issues with mike and i it's our second go around so we'll be just picture perfect <laughs> as you might expect <laughs> So, uh, Mike, why don't you give the folks, like they probably already know, but why don't you give a little backstory uh, on how we got here to talk about this tonight? What's the situation? So um, there's a podcast that's hosted by Joe Rogan. A pure uh, it's, a little, it's a little bit popular. Yep. <laughs> um, I think his, his view counts just slightly higher than ours. Yeah, I think. I, yeah. I didn't want him to feel bad. I didn't want to like, do a comparison. But, you know, he's probably close. He's probably yeah. probably, probably overperforming us slightly. <laughs> um, so he, he's got a rather popular podcast that has uh, ruffled the elderly feathers of one Mr. Neil Young uh, the wrong way. And Neil Young basically laid out an ultimatum for Spotify, which is the primary home of Joe Rogan's content. Uh, I say primary because he he does a lot of things. Um, and he does have a YouTube channel that has clips from his show. Uh, he has comedy albums, TV shows, stand-up specials that are available on all streaming platforms. That's important. <laughs> That's going to come back into this. Um, but Neil Young felt that, you know, he couldn't be on the same platform as Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan in Neil Young's mind is personally spreading misinformation about COVID-19 and vaccines and things like that. So he, he laid out an ultimatum uh, that Spotify could have him or they could have Rogan. Spotify immediately started taking down the records. <laughs> Pretty easy call. Yeah. <laughs> take, take a look at the number of downloads currently. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, should have said his Canadian geese ruffled feathers, <laughs> but that was, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so so Neil did it, and as, as you mentioned on our our lost episode uh, on this, that uh, it's not the first time Neil has had an issue with Spotify and threatened to take his catalog down. But before it was not about for the greater good; it was for better sound quality, <laughs> and he was not not sound happy. quality uh, royalties, things like that. He's yeah. he's had this is not his first or even second run in <laughs> with Spotify. Um, 
He's been on and off battling Spotify for a while. He even tried to start his own competing company at one point because he was going to take down Spotify. And uh, then he was back on Spotify. <laughs> so, so he's pulled his music off Spotify a couple of times. This is, this is old hat for them. <laughs> yep. And so, but, but Neil is not alone because as time went by, the pantheon of performers you haven't heard of in the last 15 to 20 years have emerged forward to say, we're going to take ours off too. So Joni Mitchell uh, began throughout which, you know, that would be a huge loss to us all. Uh, and uh, Nils Logfrid, um, who um, I didn't realize, Gravy's still alive. I thought he wasn't alive anymore. So good, good for you, Nils. <laughs> so way, way to be there. But but uh, he wants to get off Spotify as well. So, uh, so the interesting thing, and the reason we decided to just do this episode is that Mr. Rogan uh, has issued a response. He has. Uh, yes. And it, a 10 minute long uh, response on uh, the streaming platform. You can get it on Spotify. You can't get any Neil Young on Spotify right now, but you could get Joe's response. And I highly, highly recommend wherever you're at on all this stuff, give that an objective listen. Because I was moderately cool. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I had, I was not a listener to the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, I was familiar with him from the MMA stuff and a little bit of the comedy stuff uh, and Fear Factor and all that good stuff. But um, I hadn't been there, but I think it was, you know, one of two things, either he delivered, a note for no perfect response to what's going on, an adult response to these issues, or he is massively deceptive <laughs> and can, can spin the story to say, look, I'm like completely innocent here. And he, I mean, he is a, a four, a five-star uh, deceiver. <laughs> if, if that it's one of the two, I am tending to believe uh, that what he provided was basically Joe Rogan responding how he felt did you think it was spin or did you think it was a heartfelt response no i i thought it was pretty straightforward yeah yeah and he you know so because i'm not super plugged in the way i've been perceiving things is that rogan is you know there's nanotech in the vaccines and you know there's this parade of people <laughs> coming in uh, with all kinds of uh, horse, you know, 18 different horse tranquilizer and horse <laughs> de dewormer vendors coming on selling their wares, that this was like his stock and trade. And it, it ends up that I think there have been two episodes where two, as Joe described it, and again, he's either really shading the facts or these are, are accurate. These are not... It, these are respected people in their field. These are people that have had things published. These are people that have gone in. They are definitely not in the majority on their point of view no. on, on vaccine effectiveness, herd immunity, and all those types of things. But they're, they didn't come out of the blue. They didn't, you know, they, they've been around and they've been around and respected uh, in there, but they are definitely in a minority opinion on what they would do. And he had them on, but he's also had Sanjay, Sanjay Gupta on as well. Yes, who would yeah. be. So, so it's not like an echo chamber where he's only <laughs> delivering this information. And he, you know, they talked about Spotify, talked about uh, the idea of putting a disclaimer in front of these things in the future, which will say, Hey, the following is coming from someone who is not in the consensus opinion on these types of things, give people a little bit of context, which Rogan seemed like a hundred percent behind. So I thought it's a good idea. And he was taking it on himself. He says, I can do things better. If I'm going to have one of these people on, I should have somebody who's offering the contrary opinion on again sooner. So that they're closer together. So people can kind of take the information. And I just, I was really impressed with his response a lot enough that Joe has gotten. So this may put him over the top ahead of Bog Panda. I'm going to subscribe to Joe's podcast <laughs> and listen to it. Cause I just, I really liked his response. He didn't get defensive. He didn't go on attack. Uh, he remained open to saying, Hey, I can get better at this stuff. He said he was sorry about eight times to different people. He apologized to Neil Young. The only thing I wonder is whether he worked in a subtle dig to Joni Mitchell because <laughs> in the the, uh, the podcast he was yeah and I really love Chuck E's and love which I'm fairly certain was Ricky Lee Jones 
unless I'm mistaken. I'm not, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not familiar with Joni Mitchell's catalog. So I know who she is before the one Joni Mitchell fan gets mad, who also <laughs> is, happens to be a crossover fan of ours. Yeah. I, I know I'm, who Joni Mitchell is. Um, there, there is a couple things I'd want to, I think you, you summed it up really honestly, perfectly. There's a few things that I want to add to it. Uh, one thing from our original talk about it, um, I'm not a big Rogan guy. Uh, my interest in his show is entirely dependent upon his guest and the topic. He talks a lot about MMA and sports. I don't care <laughs> about that kind of stuff. So there's just nothing for me there. He's heavily involved in the MMA. So of course he's got, and he's a big sports guy. Of course that kind of stuff is going to be a big part of the show. I have no interest. So right off the bat, 75% of it, no interest <laughs> of what goes on in the show. Beyond that, he has a crazy large array of differing types of guests. Um, he'll have like serious doctors and scientists on, and then he'll have Alex Jones on talking about pedophile vampires from another dimension. That is a real episode and it's amazing. Go, go <laughs> listen to that one. Um, Alex Jones takes like a couple shots of whiskey, he gets a little drunk and he, he just goes off insanity. Um, great episode. <laughs> but again, at no point do I think that Joe Rogan, especially when he has those types of guests on, and the ones that I've heard, he's had people talking about Bigfoot, he's had, you know, pedophile vampires from another dimension, uh, UFO hunters, crazy, crazy stuff. He's only purporting this to, just like he says in his, his, his video, is entertainment. It's people he thinks are interesting, and he's just having conversations with them. I don't think at any point, and Correct me if I'm wrong, because again, I'm not anybody who's watching this. I'm not a big fan of the show. So this is not me defending him or anything like that because I'm a fan. I don't think at any point he's trying to tell you that this is medical advice. Even when he had those people, on, I don't think he's trying to purport this to be medical advice. Yep. He mentions in the in the response, I, I am not a doctor. And, you know, so you should... You know, and also in the disclaimer, they talked about encourage people to say, before you make any decisions, visit with your physician, which, you know, again, he's all for doing that kind of disclaimer. And I think that's super smart stuff that I think everybody's better served to say, well, however you get your information, if something kind of starts to go, oh, maybe I should try that. It's not a bad idea to visit with your physician who maybe knows a few things about you and about medicine and health uh, to help you make a good choice. Um so I just, like I said, I thought it was an excellent response. Uh, he's kind of won me over on that. Um, what I'm intrigued by now is what's Neil Young's next move? <laughs> because <laughs> because well, Neil Young's already already made his next move. So the, this is the so here here's the the color shading of the Neil Young part of it. Um, I'm not saying that Neil Young doesn't care about people dying of COVID nineteen especially because him and his base, no offense to hardcore Neil Young fans, but the people who grew up listening to Neil Young who are in his age bracket are the highest risk people <laughs> for, for issues with COVID-19. So I believe he genuinely cares about this. That being said, I believe he hates Spotify a lot more. And he's proven that for well over a decade now, fighting with them back and forth. So I don't think... It needed to be Joe Rogan. I don't think it matters that it's Joe Rogan. <laughs> I think that's an arbitrary hill to die on for him. It could have been anything that he didn't like that Spotify did to kick off the next fight with Spotify. Because again, he's removed his music from the service multiple times. He's tried to start his own competing company with Spotify. He has publicly trashed them in multiple interviews that he's done. So now that he's taken his music off Spotify, amazingly, a deal with XM Radio appeared. That's crazy, that timing. Let me tell you how licensing works because I'm on the biggest record company in the whole world. <laughs> licensing deals don't happen overnight, even for a small artist like me, let alone somebody with a catalog like Neil Young's. <laughs> so let me paint a different picture. What if Neil Young was trying to get off of Spotify so that he can make this licensing deal with Sirius XM? <laughs> Those kind of deals that take months or years to put into place that couldn't happen when 60% of his streaming revenue came from one place, a place he didn't like. <laughs> Wouldn't you maybe be looking for a good way out of that? Yep. Yep. And where you could you could go out looking noble, <laughs> like you're yeah. 
you're the good guy. Yeah, I could, I could see that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I do think it'll be, you know, they were trying to build up momentum and you can argue, you know, when Joni Mitchell jumps on the train, how much momentum the train's getting versus maybe some other folks, but uh, they were trying to, the whole, you know, cancel Spotify kind of concept. Um, I, I really do think uh, that this, um, this is going to take some of the air out of that. And, and I, cause to me, he did, he did all the Rogan did all the reasonable things to say, Hey, if there's been mistakes made, I'll need to get better on some stuff. These are just conversations. I'm not a doctor. Let's put disclaimers in front of it. These are just conversations. Um, so, so we'll have to see. He certainly, like I said, he certainly didn't seem, you know, that he was uh, militant about any of this type of stuff. No. And, and again, I, I, I would disagree with the political views probably of Joe Rogan and Neil Young. They're, they're both on farther ends of the spectrum, both on either side than I am. So I would disagree with both of them. I just happening to know the machinations of licensing deals and things like that, know that that doesn't just materialize overnight. So in fact, to get your music off of Spotify, unless they pull you down, is difficult and takes time because they're a big company that has is spread all over the world. So there's a lot of data that needs to be scrubbed off of there. And if you wanted that to happen really fast, a good way to do that would be to incite some sort of a public fight about it. <laughs> yes, indeed. And so we'll, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see how it plays out from now, how much, how much more gas this thing has because Neil's off with his, uh, his new deal. Uh, and so he's going to be, I assume, quieter now uh and we'll just we'll just have to see but the one interesting i thing i thought was i listened to the rogan thing about 10 minutes long and like i said i just was super won over um i don't know if i'd have been quite as won over if i had watched the video thing because i just saw a little bit of a clip of it but he's like in his backyard <laughs> yeah it's just him on his cell phone yeah. in his backyard yeah. You know, and uh, which, but I don't know, it just, it just to me then just seemed a little bit more like, ah, what the hell, I'll just say something. But I think it was also timely. He just wanted to kind of get it out. And he doesn't, he, he's not a, you know, this wasn't like his planned career. This has just kind of happened. Uh, and he's still kind of figuring out when all of a sudden you're dealing with this massive audience that you've got. Uh, it can get kind of tricky. But I thought it was good that he did the smart thing and got out his guys kind of pretty quickly here. Uh, just laid things out in a pretty professional way, I thought. So uh, we'll have to see. So we'd be interested in your thoughts. Let us know in the comments. Uh, I know those who strongly disagree with some of the things that on the sh show would not hesitate <laughs> to leave, <laughs> leave us a few comments on things. Uh, but uh, I mean, I think it's kind of kind of reasonable. We'd like to hear what you think and and uh, whether you're leaving Spotify to go to XM from here on out. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I think another part of that, too, is uh, it was interesting because there was some, I'm going to say, like, boomer commentary on it, where they're like, that's going to show Spotify. Neil Young has 6 million monthly listeners, which is amazing. I don't have 6 million monthly listeners. I get a little over 10,000, and I'm ecstatic about that per month. He has 6 million just on Spotify. That's crazy. Joni Mitchell has, uh, like, three Again, crazy, 3 million and 6 million per month. That combined isn't even close to single episodes of Joe Rogan's podcast. Yep. <laughs> to give you perspective, a friend of mine's band, Guns N' Roses, gets 20 million monthly Spotify listeners, and they're barely in the top 200 artists on Spotify. Neil Young and Joni Mitchell are nowhere in that ballpark. <laughs> Not even close. Bug Panda. Not in case you're wondering, folks. <laughs> it is there. There. It is the definition of an empty threat to Spotify when those people are saying they're going to pull their music off of there. Ed Sheeran has something like 50 million monthly listeners on Spotify. I don't think Neil Young has had 50 million listeners on Spotify. Jenny Mitchell is certainly not. No. So <laughs> he peaked at six million during this controversy. So. Math is not, the math isn't in his favor. No. Good. Well, we just wanted to kind of jump in uh, 
like I said, peer to peer, if you would want to hear from us <laughs> and, uh, I don't have anything else for this show. Do you, sir? No, I think that's it. Um, you know, Rogan has a bunch of episodes about doing drugs and talking to aliens. So <laughs> I think you should take that as seriously as medical advice that you would get on a podcast. And I think that that's the way you should look at it. It's a podcast. It's there to entertain you. I wouldn't take medical advice from him or Neil Young. <laughs> and I think if you ignore both of their medical advice, you're probably better off. And that's why Bigfoot is unvaccinated. Thanks for watching, everybody. (laughs) Thanks, everybody.